is in it. Maybe in the English translation, what you just said about the Russian say of the word looks mm -hmm. like a trap, but it's fine. Uh, what? Looks like what? Looks like a trap, it's not this translation. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's just a. a <laughs> looks like. Uh, let me give you the original. Не плюй в колодец, пригодится воды напиться. It's a very good old. Uh, just uh, it's, it's a very nice uh, warm uh, Russian saying. Maybe it came out in my. <laughs> a good point, thank you. I don't have anything on this, no. I don't have anything. And uh, it's, uh, I, I hope we'll get some information very shortly, so I don't want to speak too late at this point. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Um, yeah, I was just wondering if you knew if the, if the country of Qatar or the mission decided anything about this? I was uh, trying to reach the Qatari ambassador who was there at, uh, I think, most of those conversations. Uh, I was told he is out of town. But I do hope that they will also come up with clarification because uh, th th this is really... Uh, as I described it, uh, very gross. Uh, and I didn't have a single moment uh, alone with the Prime Minister of Qatar to make any kind of uh, threats or to pinch him or what. Uh, there was no moment for me to do any verbal or physical harm to the Prime Minister. Please. Master, I'm surprised actually you're even addressing it if it's just internet gossip and things. No, but, but the thing that uh, it, it, it got uh, appealing, people have been calling. Uh, uh, Arab journalists, Arab sources, we're calling people in Moscow, we've been getting calls here. So it, uh, first I saw it, I, uh, I thought maybe we issue a statement from uh, uh, our mission, but uh, then uh, it ballooned very quickly to a point where uh, I decided that uh, we need to clear the air before it uh, gets uh, even more uh, exaggerated uh, down the line. So, well, my question though is, um, what if you're concerned about about it, I think it shows a concern about your relations with the Arab world. So what concerns do you have about the impact of the veto on Saturday with your relations, particularly with GCC countries? So well, uh, we are, we are uh, concerned uh, about efforts, and I think, uh, uh, well, from even this example, you can see that uh, uh, there is a reason for this concern, that uh, this situation will be used in order artificially to try to poison our relations uh, with the Arab world. Some, uh, uh, so, uh, a record must be uh, set straight uh, on this. Please. Have you seen other signs that some of these people are trying to drive a wedge between Russia and the Arab world, apart from this report? There are some. I think uh, from, uh, uh, well, first of all, uh, uh, the very exaggerated uh, emotional, sometimes rude reaction from uh, our Western colleagues. Uh, well, they may have their purposes in mind, but uh, uh, I think uh, the, at least, side effect or maybe purpose of some of those reactions, is to uh, create some uh, uh, hostility towards Russia in the Arab world. And uh, that, of course, is not appreciated. Please. Um, do you think you have a lot of friends in the Arab world as a result I of do. that? I do. I do. No, you know, you know let's, let's look, let's look uh, in, uh, in the long term. On, on Syria, we are trying to do the right thing. We we'll take our decisions. I uh, regret the fact that there was a veto on, on Saturday. I think had we worked for two or three more days, we could have had a, a resolution which uh, uh, could be unanimously adopted today, uh, today or tomorrow. You know, in the course of our uh, discussions on that resolution on Thursday, there were, were, there were two situations when we were breaking up. Uh, uh, once in consultations, in fact, the consultations broke up and uh, uh, we were standing there in the quiet room and uh, uh, people didn't know what to tell the press. Some ambassadors left already. And then some of my Western colleagues said, well, maybe we should have another try. We did have another try. Perm reps only about seven or eight of us in the room, and we were able to produce another text bridging our differences. Uh, so, you know, there, there, uh, one must always, uh, if the purpose is really to have consensus, to have a resolution, uh, not uh, uh, overlook an opportunity or not bypass an opportunity to have a, a last try. And I believe that uh, had a chance been given to consider those amendments which we brought to the table on Saturday morning, we, we could have had it. It's, uh, uh, we have uh, some very skilled diplomats uh, around the table. Uh, we brought uh, a very um, uh, important problems to the attention of the Security Council, which needed to be addressed with regard to the uh, uh, position and activity, uh, activities of the uh, armed groups. And uh, there was a good reason for us to argue that uh, those approaches and views uh, needed to be incorporated in the text of the resolution. So uh, what happened is very regrettable, because with more effort, we uh, could have had uh, a very good statement. Uh, we could have given uh, 
uh, I think, more room for Minister Lavrov as he is trying to do his best uh, in Damascus today in order to help uh, um, resolve uh, the crisis uh, politically. So um, uh, uh, our Western colleagues are complaining about us. I, I could say that we were let down by them, with their, by, by their impatience. Uh, I understand. I understand that uh, emotionally, you know, negotiating a Security Council resolution of this sort puts a lot of stress on people. And when you come to the Council, you announce that uh, uh, you are going to vote. It's very hard to say we are postponing the vote. But sometimes you need to do the hard thing. And unfortunately, they were carried away by emotions and uh, uh, did not allow that uh, uh, last-ditch effort uh, to, Sorry, to be carried out. Yes. My question was whether your veto would isolate you in the Arab world. No, you know, it's, uh, uh, it's just one episode. I, you know, I, I don't rule out that uh, uh, um, uh, some people uh, misinterpreted, some people, uh, you know, and of course, uh, judging even by this uh, gross episode, may uh, try to take advantage of that in order to, uh, uh, to uh, you know, create a certain image of Russia and our policy in the, in the Arab world. But this is not uh, the overall picture we are getting. This is not the overall picture we are getting. So uh, I think that our relations with the Arab world uh, continue to be uh, solid. And uh, uh, we, we, we see how this uh, particular crisis plays out. I do believe that uh, we can contribute a lot uh, to its resolution. Uh, we continue to work uh, with the Arab League. In fact, uh, uh, Minister Lavrov already had conversations with the Secretary General uh, of the Arab League after the veto. And uh, at least my reading, I hope Sergei Lavrov forgives me for revealing this, at least my reading of, uh, of his uh, uh, conversation was that uh, the Secretary General of the Arab League was taking it in a very business-like manner, without over-dramatizing the uh, effect and the, and the meaning of uh, our veto. So uh, let's, uh, as far as diplomats and politicians are concerned, uh, let's be uh, professional and uh, not forget that the, the issue here, the issue here is not Russia, it's not China, it's not veto, it's not the Security Council. It is how are we going to go about uh, putting an end to the violence in Syria and to have this uh, crisis resolved uh, um, politically with as little damage uh, to the country and uh, and people of Syria. Sure. I think that the the since after the the dual veto that both the Secretary General and then, and then the PGA put out statements expressing, you know, concern that the Council couldn't reach consensus. The PGA said 13 were in favor, two were not. Now there's some discussion of a, of a GA resolution on Syria. I'm sure you've seen this. Well, Peter Vidig said it. Uh, William Hague has said it. I mean, what do you think that that would be useful? And what do you? I asked yesterday, and the, the spokesperson for the PGA said that that he was speaking for all of the member states since he's the PGA. I wondered, is that, is that well, your understanding? You no, know, I'll, I'll have, I've not seen, uh, first time I hear about it, I've not seen any proposals. Of course, uh, uh, there is this uh, uh, charter thing that while a matter is under consideration of the Security Council, the uh, General Assembly should not uh, uh, take it up. So how we deal with this uh, uh, charter um, uh, clause? So it's, uh, it's uh, uh, a rather serious and, and complicated issue. Please. Ambassador, uh, you proposed the amendments during the negotiations on the blue draft uh, on Saturday, and paragraph 11 says uh, the Security Council ex expresses support to the broad trend of political transition and to democratic plural political systems in the Middle East. So did you mean that GCC countries? No, uh, I, 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 I wonder what, I, I do not even recall that paragraph, fr frankly. I do not even recall. I don't know where you are taking this. I don't recall any broader Middle East uh, statements uh, uh, in the text of the draft resolution. Please, sir, over there. Uh, IATA inspectors uh, recently leave Iran. I, I, I don't want to, to go into other subjects. Okay. Let's, okay. let's stick with Syria, please. I continue work on the draft resolution that you tabled, that Russia tabled before the most recent one. Sorry, say the draft again. resolution that that you tabled before. Yes. Are you continuing work on that? Uh, no. Uh, at this point, uh, uh, we had a vote in the Security Council, so we now have to uh, absorb uh, the uh, impact of that, and we have to have a fresh look uh, at uh, the situation. Uh, if there is an opportunity uh, to uh, do something in the Security Council which will not uh, create another con sort of uh, falling out, uh, uh, we'll try to take that opportunity. But uh, at this point, unfortunately, I don't see uh, any room for um, uh, constructive work uh, in the Security Council. But we're not ruling anything out. Again, it, it depends on 
on the initiative, of, uh, on the purpose, but to replay the same argument again and again, I don't think uh, is going to be productive at this time. And I don't expect, unfortunately, our colleagues uh, from uh, the Western countries uh, to turn around and say, well, now we understood that your amendments are valid, so please incorporate those amendments where we can go for a vote now. Uh, I don't think they can do that. So under those circumstances, uh, I do not uh, uh, expect anything in the near future. Please. Thanks, Ambassador. Uh, I saw you on Charlie Rose last night, and you said that the um, outrage and the comments by the West, your Western allies might affect your work with them on issues like Iran and Afghanistan. Can you elaborate on that? Iran was something which Charlie Rose said. I did add Afghanistan. Uh, it's, uh, you know, of course, I think one uh, has to, uh, and it's, incidentally, I have to stress, I, I did emphasize I was expressing my personal view, sort of my personal sentiment, and talking uh, not just Security Council, but the overall picture. You know, uh, people, when they choose their words, uh, they have to, uh, to calculate the consequences. And the fact that uh, we did not uh, choose to react uh, in the same uh, kind of a, um, uh, trying to find a, a polite word in, in, in the same kind of a uh, loud way does not mean that we haven't uh, taken note, that we haven't noticed those words. So we are going to, uh, we're, we are going to uh, work on the problems. Wherever we can be constructive, we'll be constructive. Uh, but uh, we'll keep those things in mind. Please. very cool relation on the Security Council with other countries. I mean, you absolutely exclude that there will be any possibility in a month. If the situation in, in Syria stays the same or get even worse, don't you think it would be... No, you know, if, if, if the Security Council can do anything on Syria, useful, on Syria or any other matter, tomorrow or today we'll do that. We'll do that. And uh, uh, this is an extremely uh, important issue. We have to... Uh, uh, take it at face value as a very important issue. So, if, if there is an opportunity to do something constructively, we'll do that. Please. Thank you. Do you think that the Russian draft resolution is still relevant? I just, re I just answered that question. Please. You may have had to discuss your because I've come in late, but in case not, did, did you give any details of what proposals Mr. Lavrov has No, no I, have, I have no information on that, no. Sir, please. What time do you the next step in Syria? In Syria, well, we, we hope that the Arab League uh, will continue uh, its activity. We hope that the monitoring mission will be deployed again. Uh, so uh, these, these are the things I think uh, as a first priority we are looking to. Uh, and, and of course that everybody in Syria um, exercise uh, restraint uh, in this situation. The violence must stop from all sides, as we, as we have repeatedly uh, emphasized. Please. Moscow see the situation in Syria now as a civil war? Uh, uh, I, I'm not authorized to, to make such big descriptions on behalf of Moscow. Uh, you know, we've been saying that it's on the verge of the civil, of civil war. But uh, is it officially a civil war or not? I, I cannot say. Uh, do you, uh, what, what do you think about the withdrawal of uh, Arab and uh, U.S. ambassadors and some European ambassadors from Damascus? Uh, uh, those events that happen. Well, they, they, have, you, they have the right to assess the situation, including the security situation, and make their decision uh, on that. Please, you wanted, ma'am, to, to have a question. You have a question? You uh, have a question? I'm it's okay, let's go there, there and then you. Yeah. Yeah, I forgot that word. a resolution which supported the Arab League, yet Foreign Minister Lavrov is saying he wants to support the Arab League today. It could be seen as contradictory, isn't it? Yeah, but uh, we want uh, uh, to have a resolution which really supports the activity of the Arab League. To have a resolution which uh, would have uh, uh, fallen apart the moment, uh, the moment it was adopted, you know, because uh, it would not uh, contain uh, uh, the signals or the content which uh, would allow the Arab League to continue its effort. It would be only a pretext of saying, well, the government did not do this, the government did not do that, uh, that uh, would not have been uh, uh, a good idea. But on the other hand, you are right. We were very close to uh, a point where it would have been uh, really a very good uh, resolution. Matthew. Sure. I wanted to, to, to just I used to put this one to bed, this idea of in the, the, the amendment that you proposed saying that the forces of, of, of uh, the Syrian government should pull out of cities, quote, in conjunction with the end of attacks by armed groups. Both the, uh, Ambassador Lyle Grant that day at the stakeout said that it was supposed to be actually 
the armed groups uh, 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 stopping first. And I think French Ambassador Gerard Arrault has since said that, using the word lorsque or no, after. This was so first what, I wanted to know, did you say anything in the consultations that would lead no, to that? Or they just no, no, no. I, I just read the text. Uh, we did not have a very long discussion of, of, the, of the whole thing. <clears throat> if somehow they understand